What's up guys, I'm Kyle at Fortune. In this video, we are gonna smoke a whole chicken on a Weber Go Anywhere. Perfect for camping, RVing, off-road meal prep. It can be done. Oh. All right, so if you're like me, you want to meal prep before you go camping or off-roading or even in the RV, just because sometimes they don't have a lot of room. I know some people love cooking out on the trail or out camping and that's their thing. You can do this on the trail too. So I guess the first question is, why would you use a Weber Go Anywhere to smoke a whole chicken? Well, just for those reasons, if you don't want to take up a lot of room, this thing's pretty small and it doesn't use a lot of charcoal. You'll see here in a minute, we can get this thing up to hopefully around 275 degrees sustained for a few hours just on a little bit of charcoal because it's such a small canister. So before we get into it any further, spoiler alert, I've done this once before and it works. So let me show you the setup I have for my Weber and then we'll get started on getting this ready. All right, so this is my Weber 26 inch kettle. If you're gonna get a kettle, I would recommend going with the 22. This 26 is great because you can fit a lot of meat on there. And if you're meal prepping, you wanna cook a ton of chicken, you got plenty of room. But all the cool accessories come with 22 inch. There's a lot more stuff available for the 22. So I would recommend going that way. Anyways, the Weber Go Anywhere, it's pretty small. And that for reference is an eight by eight inch pan that's in there. So. This one is extremely dirty because we live in a very dusty area. I made a couple mods to this and I'll show you them real quick. Uh, number one, we have these handles up here that make it so you don't have to grab onto the metal when this thing gets hot. We've got a Oklahoma Joe's gauge on there that's got a couple zones. I really like that. Yeah, that's totally blasphemy. You can't put a Oklahoma Joe's gauge on a Weber. So I'm sure there's like a Weber hitman out to get me now. Dudes in black suits following me to work and stuff. But the gauge is huge and it's awesome. I like having the zones. It, it's very easy to read. It's glow in the dark. Love it. On the bottom here, we you can kind of see around that edge, we have some weather stripping that helps keep the smoke in and the air from coming out. So speaking of which, how does this work? Well, when you take the lid off and then you take the grill off, so you can kind of see in there, you've got some open vent holes on this side and closed on this side. So what I've done is I just tilted this vent cover. So the air is coming in through the left side and then none's coming in on the right side. So what that's gonna do, it's only gonna bring in air on this side. Then you've got your pan under this side. This is the cooking side. This is the side that the coals go on. Put your grill back on. And then when you put the lid on, once this is cooking, the vent over the coals is gonna be closed. And then the vent over the meat is gonna be open. So the air comes in on this side, travels up that way and comes through the meat and out. This works really well and it's super simple to do. All right, so let's get this thing ready. If you wanna see any of these mods I made, I have a whole video. I think it was like the second time I used it, I made these mods and they've worked out great. I like to use Kingsford blue bag, original charcoal, real simple. And then I just make two rows of five, so 10, and then a single row down the middle. 15 total per guest. That's not a lot. You'll know your Weber better than I do. You'll adjust for altitude if you want to. After a couple cooks, you'll figure out how much you actually need. I'm hoping that we can sustain this cook at about 275 degrees and two hours or less is what I'm shooting for. We will rotate the chicken 180 degrees, um, not flip it, just rotate it at some point, just because one of the legs is gonna be really close to the coals and we wanna even that out. So for the chicken itself, what I like to do is cut out the backbone and this is where that spatchcock thing comes in. Once it's out, flip it over. You can cut the whole spine out if you decide to, and then it's pretty easy to flatten it with the palm of your hand, and you kind of just crack the rest of the ribs open. Then don't forget to season both sides. The underside is not going to get um, a lot of exposure as far as eating it. It's going to be some of the wasted part that maybe you could use to make a broth or something later on, but the top side is where the skin is, and if you're a skin-on kind of person, then you're definitely going to want to season it well. So we'll get that rub on there. We'll let it sit for just a little bit, and we will get one of the tumbleweeds from Royal Oak. I like them a lot because they're super simple. They're just um, some natural wood shavings and then they have some uh, wax that ignites it, holds it together. We're gonna burn these coals for probably about 10 minutes. We don't want them all the way white. We want them about 75% ready to go. Then we're gonna dump them in there, put the grill on, scrape it. Then we'll put the chicken on, we'll set our vents and we'll put a timer on. For monitoring the temperature on the chicken, I've got the Weber iGrill Bluetooth thing. This one, I just did a long smoke and now the batteries are dead. I didn't charge it. so. We're gonna go old school. That's not that old school, I mean, it's digital. We're gonna use this Therm Pro uh, thermometer and the temp that we're shooting for with this thing, 275 degrees sustained inside the barbecue. But the temp for the chicken, since it's a whole chicken, we're gonna shoot up towards maybe 170, 
180, which is pretty high. Usually for chicken, it's just 165. Whole chicken, it's a lot of meat to cook. All right, these coals are probably like 60, 65%. We're getting really close to throw these on. All right, so the coals are about 70, 75 percent burned and the reason why we don't want to get them all the way white is because we want them to have enough life in them to ignite these new coals and then slowly die out so it's a smooth transition with the coals it's better to go a little bit heavy on the coals because i find it's easier to turn the temperature down than it is to get the temperature back up right so you can start a little bit hot and then you can close the exhaust vent which is how you'll control the temperature so all right so we put the grill back on and we're going to start brushing it off i like to burn off all the coals when i'm finished with the smoke or cook so all this that's coming off there is just char basically so i'm not too worried about it a lot of people are worried about the brush the wire brush they don't want to get the wire in their food etc i just look at the grill and make sure none of the wires came off and i usually feel pretty good about it i've never had an issue with it so we throw the chicken on it's on the cool side like we talked about earlier it's going to drag that smoke up through the chicken and out the exhaust we put the lid on make sure it's sitting with a good seal so that smoke isn't all leaking out all right now we are adjusting our vents on top so the one over the coals is going to be closed you can see i've got a little bit of smoke coming out of there it's not the best seal i think what i'll do later on is just take that little rivet out put a bolt and nut in there so i can tighten it down and get a better seal on there our exhaust vents got plenty of smoke coming out of it and let's see what our temp is our temp is 235 ish 230 and rising so that's good we want it to get up to about 275 for this cook and you can see a little bit of smoke leaking out the sides not a big deal this uh thing's taken a tumble before and you know now the lid just doesn't fit as well but this is going to be fine All right now we wait i'm going to set it for about an hour and it'll come out and check the temp once we get to I don't know, I'd say probably 115, 120, something like that. I'm going to swap it around. I'll, I'll just rotate the chicken 180 so the other side's closer to the coals and then it shouldn't be too long from there. And as usual, if you want to see any of this stuff, I'll put the links down in the description. These Weber Go Anywheres are actually pretty cheap. I'm not going to say the price because you know it fluctuates, but go check them out on Amazon and this link down there. Really a good deal. And you can just put coals on the whole bottom and use it as a grill too. But I usually use it like this offset smoker and it's so small, but it works great. If you have a big family, maybe not you might just need to use it as a grill but i love weber products this one does not disappoint you can pack this whole thing up and it, with the charcoal and the tumbleweed and everything in there i think that's a pretty cool option especially if you're trying to save space All right, one hour. All right, it's been 30 minutes. What do you guys think the temp is at? Well, on the smoker, it's just a little bit above our desired temp of 275, that's fine. Um, what about the chicken? Where do you think we're at? Let's let's get the probe out. You can see a little bit of what I was talking about earlier. You can see the tip of that wing is getting a little charred up and this side's getting more color. So once we get over 100 and start bridging closer to like 120, like I said, that's when we're gonna try to rotate this around and give the other side a shot to burn. All right, so let's see how we're doing here. Oh my gosh, 155 on that side about 132 over here only 118 116 in the breast and about 134 okay so this is a good time to rotate it now because you can see this one side is cooking a lot fast so we're gonna spin it around i'll probably just give it about 30 minutes and I'll check on it. And then once we get close to about 175, I'm gonna wrap it up and let it sit for 30 minutes. So let's get this thing swapped. So the longer we leave this lid off, the hotter these coals are gonna get. And you can see that first line of coals we put in there starting to turn, putting out a nice amount of smoke with the rest of these. Let's throw the lid back on and see this one isn't very tight so that one opened up we don't want that this one i'm going to close it just a tiny bit like maybe an eighth because it was getting a little bit hot so we'll let that temperature get back up so like i said i'm going to give it about 30 minutes we'll come check on this again we'll see where that temperature is I, I think we're getting close all right so we're at an hour cook time it's been about 20 minutes since the last look Ooh, starting to get browned up a little bit let's see where we're at now about the same this side about 170 169 a lot of liquid coming out there. This is good. Breast is about 140. This side's still a lot hotter, 150. All right, we are getting close. All right, we're back. Temp 260-ish. Not bad. Oh, she's looking good. Still plenty of burn time on these coals. The breast is at 158 on that side, 155 on this side. So the this isn't ready yet. Dark meat, 180, 162. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna flip this around again, and we'll try it again. We'll do another 15 minutes. So we're at an hour 15 right now. After 15, we'll be an hour and a half. Hopefully that's gonna do it. 15 minutes later. Ooh, pretty close to 275 on there. Let's see how we're doing. 
A lot more color on this side. Check these breasts first. 55 over here, 63 over here, 62, 71. Time to rotate it again. We're just gonna have to keep rotating it to make sure this is cooking evenly. 15 later. So see the temperature with this amount of coals is perfect. Like it, it just keeps hanging out at 275 so we don't have to mess with it. Let's see. Oh yeah. Definitely getting some color now. 167, 170, 180. We are done. All right, so she's done on the coals. At this point, what you could do is you could flip this upside down and put it over the coals to sharp the skin and get a little bit crispy. If it's not crispy for you, this is already. Here, you know what? While I go get some aluminum foil, I'll throw it over the coals just for the fun of it. What I'm gonna do is let it sit for about 30 minutes. So what I usually do is I put it in the microwave and you know, microwave off obviously. I don't think aluminum foil would do well in there. I'm just gonna let it rest for 30 minutes. It does a couple things, kind of slowly brings the temperature down and it also makes it so by the time you eat that chicken, um, a lot of those juices have been sitting in there. It's not piping hot, so it's not gonna burn your fingers while you're eating it because coming right off the coals, it's hot. Speaking of the coals, what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna put the lid back on and open up both vents. I'm just gonna try to burn off the rest of those coals. Maybe Maybe have about 25% of them left, so we definitely could have gone longer if we needed to. So we'll put this back on, open both the vents, and start getting those coals nice and hot. We'll put this in the microwave, we'll let it sit 30 minutes, we'll check back. It's time to eat. Oh yeah. All right, we're fighting off the flies here, but the skin is still a little crispy. It's nice and tight. And then these breasts, which is usually the drier part of the chicken, totally, I'm gonna use the forbidden word here, moist. moist. A ton of moisture inside these. And I'm gonna eat a quarter and a wing for dinner. And I think tomorrow I'll just have this breast and it's great. I already sampled a little bit. It's awesome. Whole chicken on the Weber, piece of cake. So a little bit of disclosure here. This this chicken was like just under four pounds. So it's like a young chicken. Um, could you do a bigger one? I think you could. I. I I honestly haven't tried but yeah this is a great size for uh you know a small family so yeah i told you you can totally do a whole chicken on this tiny little weber it's weird i went a long time without knowing that this thing even existed and once i saw the price i was like yeah i gotta buy one um they're just too cheap to not have one perfect for you know tailgating camping rving whatever you want to do with it i use it at home a lot because uh, we're just two adults and a kid so we don't have to cook a lot of food most of the time even a whole chicken i mean that's like four meals for the adults anyways all of this stuff down in the description check it out if you use our link to buy some stuff our channel gets a little bit of a kickback which is cool so we can buy some more stuff for barbecuing or camping or off-roading whatever and uh, we just like making the content it's fun so thanks for checking out this video if you guys want to see more of the cooking the smoking the grilling or whatever let me know in the comments and i'll start making some more stuff on the weber and if you have some recommendations of things you want me to try i'll do it i'm not even that scared thanks for checking out the video guys see you in the next one